Welcome to our webinar, Speech-Language Pathology Information Session with Dr. Troy Glifford Dargan, Clinical Assistant Professor of the Masters in Speech-Language Pathology at the Yeshiva University. Uh, Jared is the Director of Recruitment and Admissions for the CAT School. He is a graduate of Yeshiva University High School and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Applied Economics and Management from Cornell University. Um, Jared is passionate about helping students pursue their passions, both academically and uh, professionally. So please welcome uh, Jared. Thank you very much, Valerie, and thank you very much to all the attendees here today. I know you have a lot of options in terms of how to spend your time, so thank you for spending it with us today for our speech language pathology information session. So our speaker today is going to be Dr. Troy Clifford Dargan. Dr. Dargan has master's degrees in music, speech language pathology, political science and finance, and a PhD in speech language pathology with a focus on habilitation of the professional voice. He is certified practitioner in the Arthur Lessock voice body technique, and he holds a certificate in vocology from the National Center for Voice and Speech. He offers continuing education through his visions and voice, where he combines his academic and entrepreneurial business interests. And now let's learn from Dr. Dargan. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So today we're talking about the uh, program and uh, the classes at uh, the CAT School at Yeshiva University. As mentioned, I'm a professor here, and uh, so what I teach is um, research methods, voice disorders, capstone class, which I'll talk about in a moment, and some others. So what is the program at uh, Yeshiva like? It's a Master's of Science, and it's a Master's of Science instead of Arts because we focus on medical speech language pathology. There are 66 credits, and that's over the course of five semesters. We want you to be able to get in and out without wasting too much time because we know that tuition dollars you're paying and you need to get out and make a living. So we want to give you as much education as possible in, um, in five semesters as possible. And we're at the New York City um, main campus, uh, uptown at 181st Street, and we have a fall start date. So, um, Let's go on to the next one. So Dr. Dargan, uh, definitely this, we know this is a, a wonderful program based in New York City. Um, so we would love to learn a little bit about the curriculum and the highlights of the curriculum and what students will study and why it's relevant towards their degree. Right, so we're a fairly new program um, and we started because there was a group of uh, professional SLPs in the New York City area that really, um, that were taking students from other schools who felt that there was a need for um, education in medical speech path, that that was a, something lacking in the area. So that's why this program was created. We focus on the medical SLP and through our curriculum, which is really dynamic uh, and sets us apart from other universities, we have five credit hours in dysphagia, which is swallowing disorders. And we cut that into two classes in pediatrics uh, feeding and geriatric swallowing disorders. Typical universities, you might only get one credit hour of a seminar type class. And most, the most you get is a, a three credit hour class. So you're really um, engaged in uh, the study of swallowing disorders. And we have uh, three faculty members that are experts in the area. We actually have one faculty member that has uh, created a modality to help uh, people to swallow through um, I believe it's through electrodes, but some sort of process, some sort of um, modality to assist in swallowing. Voice uh, class is taught by myself, and I teach not just voice disorders. I teach voice disorders as uh, you might see also with voice performers. So I teach the um, habilitated voice, the, the natural voice, and the performing voice, and the disordered voice. So especially in a metropolitan area such as New York City, SLPs are going to have lots of um, uh, clients that, if, if they're in the voice clinic, that are performers. And so it's important that you get at least a 
basically starting knowledge of um, how to deal with those types of uh, clients. We have a specific course uh, in motor and neurology, a specific course in aphasia, a specific course in craniofacial anomalies. These are all specific three credit hour courses that a lot of times you get in a one credit hour course or they're combined in one course in most universities. Here we have a very eclectic set of, of classes that really prepare you for your future in um, the medical world if you choose to do that. And by uh, coming here, we really set you up for the competitive uh, CFYs, the clinical fellowship year that you um, enter into after you graduate to become certified. And thank you, Dr. Dargan, for those curricular highlights. And so one question that I would have is, um, what, are, what are some examples of some of the categories of the coursework, some of the sample courses, and, and the steps that students can take towards graduation? So as I kind of already highlighted a, a major distinction of our, our classes, we also have a very unique class. Well, it's not unique. It's a, a difference than some universities. Uh, there has to be a summative exam when you leave that we bestow basically and say, as a faculty, we feel you have obtained all the knowledge and we think that you'll be a, a great clinician. And this class is not um, like some, some universities have a, a comprehensive exam where you come in and you write everything you know and you either pass or you don't pass. And if you don't pass, you fail. We don't have that. We've elected to have a capstone class where uh, you write a literature review and you have input through us throughout uh, the semester of how to write it better, et cetera. So um, it's not uh, uh, as stressful as a, a comprehensive exam, whether you pass uh, and graduate or not, your last five sem semesters based on this one class. Uh, so it also gives you um, a unique experience to be able to tie in your research methods classes and to do some of your own beginnings of uh, research. We also have externships for three semesters instead of one. Most universities have one semester, um, and that's at the end of their, their um, education where they go into a professional setting and do a, a, a full semester of clinic work. We actually have that for three semesters. It's, we don't have an in-house clinic. We have externships, which there are very few universities that have that in the country. I think it's a benefit where you are thrown into real world right away. You get to work in um, many types of different settings, professional settings with SLPs that are your, your guiding supervisors that teach you um, how to be a clinician uh, in the world today. We also have an internship the first semester. Well, it's actually the second semester you're in here, but your first semester of clinic work. So your very first semester is just complete didactic coursework. Then your second semester on, you'll be doing clinic work. And your second semester, you're with our in-house clinic director, where she is looking over your shoulder and she's walking through a SIMU case with you step by step all semester so that you don't make mistakes on clients first, that you actually um, get the knowledge before you're thrown into the pack of wolves, your um, third semester or your first real externship. And then at the end, you'll take a praxis exam that uh, you must pass. And I think it's all states to be able to practice as an SLP, or at least it's for most states. And uh, that certainly is the case for New York. And once you pass the praxis exam, um, you uh, complete your clinical fellowship year of 36 weeks, and it's a paid position, uh, just like a regular job. Uh, and then you move into your next um, your next area, which is you would apply for CCC, and that basically means that you're fully um, certified. Thank you, Dr. Dargan. So having run through the curricular highlights, and the capstone, the really unique and dynamic externships, internship, praxis, praxis exam. Um, I, I suppose students may want to know their typical day-to-day -day schedule. So is it possible to run us through that? Yes. So we are a full-time program, and you can expect to be in class or externship all day. 
that varies by externship and it varies by day and semester. So typically eight to five, nine to six, it might be 10 to seven, it might be nine to six or seven some days, it just depends. Uh, sometimes you'll even have a, a huge break. Um, but you're starting your second semester when you start clinic, you only have classes Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So you're typically in class then all day long, eight to five at least sometimes into the evening, it depends on the semester. Uh, and then you're in externships Monday, Thursday, Friday. That's very beneficial, I think, in that you get all your classwork right in a row and it's, it's really engaging and um, you have a concentrated amount of, uh, of work in front of you so that you can concentrate all your Tuesdays and Wednesdays on coursework and then all your time in externships instead of wasting um, travel time getting to class and then to clinic. And so we find that to be a, a very beneficial schedule for students. Wonderful. So with, with those varied externships, um, it definitely sounds like students are prepared very well for career. So can you delve into some of the careers that students will be prepared for? Right. So uh, graduating with a master's in SLP, you'll be a clinician and you can work in a medical hospital setting, a school setting, language. Uh, you'll be look, working with uh, adult through child. So uh, Professor Medved here says cradle to grave. So you work from children to adults and uh, you could do language or medical. So um, it ASHA just requires that you have a set the set skills to do it. So we have such a broad area in SLP, it's impossible for anyone to come out of a program their first year and think that they have the knowledge and skills to treat child through adult on every area. Um, that's even more so with individuals who haven't had um, uh, education in medical uh, settings. So our students who have all these eclectic classes in aphasia and neurology and dysphagia, you have those skills that ASHA requires of you to be able to treat those patients. So you're not going to have to go out and get extra education to be able to start working with those patients. So that's uh, uh, a great thing about our curriculum. Again, SLP is broad and depth. So you can teach from uh, or you can uh, treat from child to grave in language or medical SLP. So no matter what program you go to, you're going to be able to treat the same, um, you all have the same degree. It's just up to you to, to realize if you have the knowledge and skills to be able to treat that population. Also, I guess I should say, after you get your master's degree, if you are interested in teaching, um, you could, you could um, uh, do some adjunct work, or you could even be a, a professor in a clinic uh, setting, or some schools even allow uh, people with master's degrees to teach without a PhD, or you could go on to a PhD. You could also be an associate or a contractor for uh, different uh, companies. I know pe some people who have gone to a company called K Pentax after they graduated, and they work as a salesman for their equipment. So there's uh, the typical route is clinician, but there are many other ways where you can make a really great living and have an adventurous career. Wonderful. So there definitely seem to be a, a lot of great career options. So certainly with my own biased outlook as one who does recruitment and admissions for the program, definitely sounds like a great program to me. But um, certainly, uh, students will, prospective students will be listening in, and students looking at applying to our program may apply to other programs. So, I, I guess what I'm wondering is uh, what makes this particular program, at the SLP program at the Cat School at Yeshiva University, unique? Well, as I said, we talked about medical SLP is a you, you get great education that way. And I think another um, element is we have three externships. And so you're thrown into the real working world with real professionals. And um, I, those are the two main main characteristics. I also think that our faculty is dynamic. We're, we're um, energetic and we have lots of interests and we're in the working world as well. We're still seeing patients. We're 
doing um, uh, active work to keep our teaching um, up to uh, the standards of today. Great. Um, so those are all the uh, questions that we prepared for the presentation. Um, but looking over into our control panel, I do have some more questions for you, uh, Dr. Argan. Let me just take a look here. I see our observation hours required for admission. Actually, right. yes, you must have 25 hours of observation, which if you're in a program or a, a prereq program, then that's already um, that's already covered, but you must have those and provide those before admission in the fall. Also, I guess I should also say another unique thing about our program that I totally forgot just because I live with it every day is that um, if you come from a non-SLP background, we our university really can save you a year worth of classes because our prereqs, we only require five, really four prereqs. There is five prereqs, but that fifth one is going to be required everywhere and that's a statistics course. The other four specific to SLP is all you need is intro to SLP. Um, you need hearing science, speech science, and phonetics because we don't really teach those courses in our curriculum. All the other prereqs that um, some universities require before you get into your SL or your master's degree, we cover those components in um, almost a review set type um, setting in our first semester. So I think that uh, that's a real definite draw to our program. Fantastic. And and uh, and you mentioned you live with that every day. I suppose another thing that we live with every day here in New York City is, the, is our location. And so I suppose I'm wondering um, if you feel that the New York City, specifically Manhattan location of the program, um, is relevant to the uh, student experience or the outcomes in any way? I do because um, you know it's a it's one of the most multicultural centers in the world. You're going to be introduced to um, a whole array of multicultural uh, backgrounds, and you'll be able to work with different cultures, which is really a benefit. And um, especially for students with different uh, backgrounds that are looking for that experience, I can say that that's dynamic because I I just moved here two years ago from Kansas and. Um, when you're in a small school setting, uh, not, I'm sorry, not a small school, um, a, a, a small mm, location as uh, maybe a small city in the Midwest, or even that could even exist on the East Coast where you have um, not a big uh, metropolitan area. But let's say there is nothing around for three, four hundred miles. So the SLP then has to be a jack of all trades and be able to treat many different areas where in a place like New York City, you can really focus on voice or swallow and really just see those those patients. So that's another um, uh, side to being in New York City. Awesome. It looks like we have um, two more questions. So let's just touch base quickly before we finish up here. Um, Second question is, is there any opportunities to talk to a current student in the program? Uh, sure, if you want to uh, email um, the graduate uh, admissions office, I know that there are graduate students that uh, work there that would be happy to speak with you or arrange something like that. Sure, and uh, on that note, we also, um, on a few occasions have been able to arrange sort of virtual tours where you can sort of FaceTime with the student and the student will show you around uh, some of the campus and the classrooms and have you sort of get to know the campus and be able to really uh, get a sense of it. So it's also something that we have available. Great. Um, it looks like we have time for one more question here. So how diverse are your graduate students referring to minority students as well as faculty? I don't really have the data on that. You might right. have more specific data, but I would say it's very diverse. I know that um, culturally speaking, just by looking into the classroom and also um, being on admissions uh, committee, I know that we have a high percentage of uh, people not from the Northeast area. So we have people from all over uh, the country and the world really in our program. 
Great. Um, so just wrapping up here, um, we can talk a little bit about um, possible next steps of starting your application um, at gradapp.yu.edu or we have all of our information where you can easily contact anyone with further questions about admissions. Um, the phone number 833-241-GRAD um, or also um, about more admissions questions, uh, feel free to email at catsgrad.yu.edu. And our CATS grad team is fantastic and they can help you through any aspect of the application or answer any more questions that you may have because you may end up with questions after this presentation. So we're definitely here and definitely happy to help. Awesome. Um, thank you, Jared. And thank you, uh, Dr. Dargan, for joining us today. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> like just in time. That's our all the time. Thank you. That's our cue. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>